Hello again YouTube and welcome back to the 8th uh, video in the RPG from scratch series. I can't believe it's 8 already. Uh, it feels good to, to have some progress under my belt now. Um, once again I wanted to go ahead and uh, uh, make sure I gave credit where credit was due and uh, uh, mention um, Kurt Jagers, I believe is how you pronounce his name. XNA 4.0 Game Development by Example. Uh, it's a great book. I highly recommend going ahead and taking a look at it. Uh, I'm actually really following his instruction and modifying the uh, the code um, for for chapter eight and in this uh, project that I'm doing here as a, as a way to get my f my feet wet, so to speak, in, in the whole um, um, design and conquer method for um, X and A. But at any rate, in the last video, we went ahead and expanded a bit on our map cell content class, and I didn't get a chance to um, put this in a region, which I wanted to do. Um, so I'll do that now real quick before I forget. Uh, all, all we have to do again is uh, give the precompiled directive REGION and we call th we'll call this one um, constructor because uh, it's only one constructor at this point. You can have multiple well, overloaded constructors. Um, I, I believe you can. I'm not positive on that. But um, in our case we're just going to name this constructor so we can get in the habit. So we'll end region here. Um, and, and again, what this does is it makes it so that your code is nice and pretty. So if you know you have an issue with the constructor, you can skip having to scroll through lines and lines and lines of code and go right to this nicely labeled thing called constructor and open it up. But for right now, we'll keep both of those open. Um, so w what we did um, in the last video is we uh, all we did was we modified the using directives up here up top to give us access to the XNA framework and XNA framework .graphics. Uh, we made the the class serializable which basically enables us to take the end memory representation of the map cell content object and uh, um, basically um, throw it into a bit stream and that allows us to save it to the hard drive. Um, I'm not 100% positive on the inner workings on that. If you guys wanted to do some research on it, I'm sure you could pr probably find all kinds of uh, all kinds of data on the internet about it. But that's beyond the scope of this tutorial completely. I have no idea. I just know that it works. Um, what what we did was we made the the class public. Uh, we added data members, um, and uh, uh, we added a constructor. And, and what the constructor allows us to do is basically when we have our multi-dimensional array um, it's actually literally uh, uh, if you're not familiar with multi-dimensional arrays I wanted to give you an idea of what it is it's really it's not that hard of a, a concept to get um, we'll use Excel for this uh, because it makes visualizing it a, a bit easier um, so what we can do here is we can we can view this as you get the idea and uh, we, we can go back here and visualize this as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc. Okay, um, so what we have is, is a multi-dimensional array and it would be a 8 by 10 and basically what you have is a, a, a reference. Um, you, you reference, let's say we wanted to know, uh, and this, this, this pertains to the, the world, um, the world map will basically be a, a grid of these empty boxes or cells, as they're called. Here's why I actually named the, uh, the 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 map cell content class what I did because we're going to take these map cell contents and cell content. Um, we're actually going to use this information here to fill up each one of these boxes. Now, each one of these boxes corresponds to a, a, a box on the world map. So our world map at this point in time would be um, eight tiles wide by ten tiles um, um, uh, uh, high. So so basically, what we have is a multi-dimensional array of map um, cell content objects. Now each one of the map cell content objects will be uh, initialized basically um, by a function that fills in a multi-dimensional array and what we'll do is we'll have that function fill in each one of these tiles all of these tiles will be filled in initially with water and this will allow us to draw on each individual um, land tile um, easier without having to worry about filling in all the water which is similar to what 
um, um, Kurt did in, in his example only he used sky tiles because he did a side scroller and I'm converting that whole concept into a, an RPG game but basically what we have is, is we'll have a multi-dimensional array um, representing the world screen and it will be a multi-dimensional array of uh, map cell content objects and the map cell content objects are going to serve multiple multiple purposes as a matter of fact the the, the maps uh, they will provide information as to whether or not the tile is passable um, they'll, they'll provide information whether or not you can um, uh, uh, contact the tile and get transported somewhere else uh, that would kind of correspond to a staircase if your character moved into the staircase tile let's say this was a staircase tile if you moved there you'd be transported into the next level which would be a completely different level map that, that's where the that the teleport index comes in and uh, if it's passable and also uh, for drawing purposes to draw the world um, we need to index layers and the layers are basically um, integers that correspond to our source textures and again uh, e each one of these each one of these map cell content objects when you instantiate um, a map cell content object uh, uh, you basically create a copy of each one of these variables and what we're going to do is we're going to assign it to a multi-dimensional array now this multi-dimensional array looks something like this so you'll have a map cell content object there 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 but all this is is really it's just a collection of uh, of these one two two integers a string and a boolean value so you basically say that this cell here has a copy of of uh, two integers in a list, a uh, string, and a boolean value. And as does this one, this one, this one, this one, all of them. All, all of the ones in your multidimensional array, all it is is a multidimensional array of these data members. And uh, the constructor allows us to pass, when we instantiate, what we'll do is, is we'll, we'll, uh, when you instantiate a map cell content object, you, you, you call the constructor and you pass in these variables and, and what they do is uh, you can pass in these variables uh, 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 which will set basically the, the, um, the image, the background image, the base image as I've called it. It'll set the foreground image which we haven't made the source texture but that'll be the caves and all that other good stuff. It will set a teleport index if any which is just a string which will correspond to um, a different level in the map or something like that and we um, send in a, uh, a, uh, a, a is passable variable which is a boolean variable which basically corresponds to whether you can move your avatar into that into that um, cell and uh, that's really that's all this is the only thing that we have to add to this is uh, we'll do one more region even though um, it's only it's only one data uh, it's only one method but I, I wanted to add it anyway just to keep our code consistent we're gonna call it region we're gonna call it public which this is a good habit to do even though it's only one method we'll call it methods at any rate because we never know we might have to come back and add a, another public method but um, all this is gonna do is allow us to um, it's gonna allow us to the end region there it's going to allow us to toggle whether or not the, uh, the this particular map cell content object is passable and the reason we need that I know in the real game you wouldn't um, um, you wouldn't have the option to make a wall passable per se but in our um, level editor we do want to be able to toggle whether or not it's passable and, and that's why um, we, we make this uh, this here public method and th this is going to um, this will, this is going to be public. This method will be public. It's not going to return anything, so we could call it void, and it's going to ca uh, be called toggle is passable. And it doesn't need any arguments. And um, the only thing it does is uh, it, it sets is a B passable equals mat 
and that's simply all it does. And this, whenever this is called, it will take the um, is passable member variable, and and it will um, make it the opposite of what it is. That's um, how I understand it. Um, and this allows us to toggle whether or not this particular map cell content object is passable, and that's fairly intuitive. And uh, as you can see, it's all in regions. And we'll just clean this up just a little bit here, and we'll show you what this will look like when we go ahead and minimize all of our regions. Now, I always minimize them after I've constructed them. This just makes coming back in um, Microsoft Visual Studio will actually remember these um, um, expanded or collapsed settings. And when you come back to do uh, modifications or if you have to debug, it's a lot easier to have these already closed down when you're looking for, oh my god, why is the toggle method not working? All you have to do is go, well, it's a a, a uh, map cell content object, uh, a public method, and you come here and you say, oh, there's public methods, expand it, and there it is, instead of having to go through um, um, three, three, four, five lines, or, or all, all, all 100 lines of code, potentially, you just go through and, 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 um, and find the uh, label that's appropriate to what you're looking for, but I've beat a dead horse enough to with this. I think that um, about does it for this tutorial. I'm actually out of time. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, look out for the next tutorial. Thanks.